Hi, everyone, and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes in Wyndham. This time, it's time once again for a series championship match. This time, the Nalts Ford Championship. More than $2,000 in prize money. A lot of that to be given away today. $500 to the runner-up, $1,000 to the winner. And, of course, Nalts Ford providing a little extra excitement with the brand new Ford Escort should one of our two bowlers today hit a 200 game and uh, Brian Fuller's come mighty close a couple of times the last couple of weeks so uh, both of these guys are capable especially two weeks ago with 187 last week he started off with a double strike spare strike and he was on his way again but uh, standing his way this week for the uh, ladder championship with Bill Logan and uh, Bill average is 116 but he hit 745 for the roll-off score which is 149 average so all right, let's meet Bill Logan, get a look at his uh, form in slow motion. Bill's from Woburn, Massachusetts. In fact, the only Massachusetts representative in this particular ladder series. Yeah, he's got a high single of 186 and 470 for his high triple. The 116 average, I always say averages don't mean anything in a three-string match. And he averaged 149, like I said, uh, to qualify for the show. And Bill, of course, has been uh, waiting around patiently. Uh, watched the last couple of shows, and uh, he's been waiting around the last couple of weeks uh, to get a shot at his chance at the big money, of course, with that 7.45 to win the recent roll-off finals. Meanwhile, Brian Fuller, if you haven't been with us the last couple of weeks, two weeks ago it was 4.33. Last week it was 4.38, and uh, here he goes trying for number three in a row. You might think he'd be getting tired, but he's not throwing that many balls when you throw out that many strikes and spares. <laughs> but he's just been uh, unbelievable the last two weeks. Uh, I didn't think think he could better the score two weeks ago, 433, but he came back last week with 438 against Ed Emerson. So uh, he's ready to go, and uh, I'm ready, you're ready, let's, let's do it. All right, there's more money to talk about, too. We have $80 in the bonus ball contest at the end of the show, but that's all later on. We have to decide this series championship before we do all that. The first of three strings of candlepin bowling will get underway right after these messages. Don't go away. Okay, we have reached the final challenge once again, the fifth week of this series. And Brian Fuller, the number three seed, after beating Clarence Davis two weeks ago with a 433, and then Ed Emerson last week with a 438. Today we'll meet the challenge of our number one seed, Bill Logan. And you see how far ahead of the rest of the field Bill Logan was, uh, 48 pins ahead of the next nearest bowler in the final roll-off. It's, uh, it's not unusual to see less than 48 pins from, from first to sixth in the roll-off, but uh, a 48-pin advantage like that, that is really something. But Bill is ready to see if he can capitalize on that big roll-off now as he's ready to go. First string of a scheduled three here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes for the Nalts Ford Championship. This should be a good one. Bill with an average of 116, so you see it, uh, all it takes is a day to get hot. Yeah, I always said, you know, averages, because there is a difference between houses, between bowling centers. Uh, some are faster than others, so your averages sometimes get a little distorted. Uh, somebody come in with 100 and 25 or 130 average at one house might be 115 in another house. You, you can never tell. The cream always comes to the top, and I think um, when you get the lights on in a three-string match, head-to-head, -head, um, same conditions, then you find out your true averages. Better first ball that time for Bill on a spare leave. Of course, we should mention one other element here, and that is that Bill is making his very first appearance here on Stars and Strikes. So if that weren't enough with the big money on the line, too, uh, he's making his first appearance here at Park Place Lanes, and he picks up a spare in the second. When Brian came on a few weeks ago, he was his first appearance, too, and he did nothing but throw two strikes the first two balls he threw and almost walked off with a new Ford Escort. Compliments of Nalts Ford. For throwing that 200 game, he was 187, three pin, uh, 13 pins away. Brian Fuller. Full on the head pin that time. The 3 4 6. Brian, two weeks ago, his first appearance ever on our program. His first string was a 187, including two double strikes. He had five strikes altogether in the string. And there's a nice 10 for Brian. 
And then he followed up the 187 with a 116 and then a 130 for a 433. Last week he was more consistent start to finish. 153, 148, and 137 for a 438 total. He had 18 marks last week, 16 the week before. In each week he has had six strikes. And he's been marking, of course, more than 50% of the time. Two, four, five with a 10 in the right hand corner. Yes, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> he can't believe that himself. That really was something. There was a piece of wood flying and dancing right next to the five pin, and it didn't go down. And it'll just be a 10 box. A pair of 10s for Brian Fuller. Eight pin drop. Leaves the three in the seven. Ooh. Yeah, he tried to go inside of the three pin, hoping the ball would carry him off that into the wood in front of the seven. Covers it for the 10. This is only the second time that Brian has trailed in his three weeks. He trailed by 10 pins after two frames last week before finishing off Ed Emerson. And now he trails by six after the first two. Oh, it's a fine try. So the wood looking at him like it was straight at him. He had to cap it, drive it back, and everything but the eight. I'm going to tell you the 745 consisted of five superb games in the semifinals for, or the finals for Bill Logan to get on the show. 154 was his opening game. I think he dropped down a little bit to 136. Shot up to a 180. Came back to 132 in the final game, 143 for 745. And the interesting thing about the 180, uh, Dan, Bill was telling me before we went on the air, is that he did not have a single double strike in that 180 game. He had two strikes only in that string. He had seven nine drops wow. and one seven drop. So he had a lot of spares, but only two strikes. He had, needless to say, a lot of spare nines, which <laughs> can add up in a hurry. When you were telling a story uh, off the air last week that we never had a chance to tell on the air about Ed Emerson when he left the roll off. Of course, he wound up finishing second and seated second in this series, but he really didn't. <laughs> no, he bowled. There was four shifts for the finals at the King Lanes at, in, uh, I, I guess it's Pernardville. I guess it's a suburb of Manchester. And um, Ed said he bowled the first shift of the four shifts and, and hit 690. I forget what his score was here. 697. 697. And he was second to Bill Logan with 745. And he, he was thinking, well, uh, the way the pins were flying, I'm, I'm not going to end up in the top six. But the one two bowlers uh, remain the same. So you never know. Seven pin lead through four boxes for Bill Logan. He's looking at the five and the eight. Bill and his wife, Sharon, live in Woburn, Mass. And they are expecting their first child sometime next summer. Bill works as a roofer. And he's a busy guy. He bowls uh, both in Burlington, Mass, and at the Londonderry Bowling Center up here in New Hampshire. Bowls in a league in each place. Oh, what an out. What a 10. Boy, when he put that ball down, Dan, you couldn't hear a thing. No. Four 
four straight 10 boxes for Bill Logan. And Brian Fuller is through the middle. Well, this could be a knockdown, drag him out struggle for both bowlers. And you uh oh. Never, you never know from one week to the next. Well, they always say defense wins championships. So. <laughs> well, that's a good out considering went through the middle and chopped out the one, five, and eight, went through the middle again with a second ball, and then it was able to come out with a seven. Down by 10. Difference in prize money is $500. A thousand to the winner, 500 to the runner up. So, good piece of change on the line. The end of the show. Ice Mark. The end of the show, Tony Maceos, the new vehicle operations manager for Nolts Ford, will be with us to help present the checks. Certainly want to thank everyone in Nolts Ford for their fine support and with the extra bonus of the brand new car for the 200 is game is a big strike. strike for Bill Logan. First one of the day for either man. One, two pocket, one Brooklyn side, trips to six, looking for two. Missed to the right. One, two, four with the eight, and then the six, 10 in the right-hand corner. Box. A few weeks ago, Dan, we were talking about an instance that occurred when the ball did not hit a piece of wood or a pin in play, and the ball hit the curtain. The curtain snapped back and knocked over a pin, which of course is not a legal pinfall. And we were asking a speculative question about when the curtain comes completely off its moorings as it did, I believe, during that very same show a few weeks ago. And uh, what would happen if that curtain in the back were to come off its moorings during play and come down and knock pins down, say, after the ball was thrown? Okay, and, and <clears throat> the ruling that I get is that it's outside interference and you would take the frame over again. However, if the person was working on a mark and had thrown the first ball, and let's say working on a spare and got a seven drop, and then the curtain came down and knocked pins down, they have they would have already have established the fill on the spare, therefore they would have to take it and then reset and get the frame over. Taking it one step further, if they're on a strike and they threw just one ball, they haven't established the fill yet because they have another ball coming and happened, they would reset and take the fill on the strike over again as well. One of those strange things that you don't count on happening. Has anything like that ever, a weird occurrence like that ever, ever happened in a tournament that you've been in? I can't remember anything like that happening today. I'm sure that it probably has over the years. It's about every other strange thing that's happened in this game. It's about every other strange <laughs> thing has happened these past few weeks. <laughs> that's right. I'll tell you a funny story. Another fellow on another bowling show, he uh, started, and this happened just recently. I'm sure probably people know what I'm talking about, but um, the fellow started his approach. And as he approached the pins, just at the point of release, the six pin fell over. So the bowler tried to stop. But what happens, the ball went straight up, <laughs> hit the ceiling, <laughs> came back down on the lane. The lob line judge called lob. <laughs> the TV crew didn't know what was going on because no one saw, actually saw the pin fall except for the spectators and the bowler. <laughs> it's kind of a funny thing. Finally straightened it out and took it over and everything else, but uh, I guess one of the cameramen went scrambling with the ball come sailing <laughs> back down. <laughs> Spare, but just the four on it for Bill Logan, and now struggling to get out of this in the tenth. And he'll take the easy two in the corner for 111. 111, but I'm sure Bill a little disappointed the fact that he had three marks in that game for 111. Brian Fuller struggling himself. He'll need a mark, a couple of marks to catch Brian at the 111. 
uh, to catch Bill, rather. Well, looks like it's going to be back to earth for Brian Fuller here. This will mess up your 146 average <laughs> in a hurry. Well, there it is. <laughs> Gave himself a hand on that one, saying, come on, I can do better than this. And, and he did. He did. Well, he's going to pull in close anyways. And unless he throws another strike, he won't have the lead. But it certainly will be close. Well, if he gets this, it'll just be a three-pin difference. Boy, that's 20 very big pins in the final frame for Brian Fuller, and that tighten thing, tightens things up considerably. 111 to 108 after one string. The ladder championship match. The Nults championship here on Stars and Strikes. Second string coming up along with the contest address. Get a pen and paper ready. We'll be back. Coming up at the end of the show, $80 in the bonus ball contest. Hope you have your cards in. Send them in, regular size postcards only, please, with your name, your full address, and the number from 1 to 10. And mail them on in to Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. We put them in the big TV, and uh, if we draw your card out and it matches the number of pins that drop on the bonus ball at the end of the show, you'll win the money that's accumulated in the jackpot. If not, it's a TV50 NHCBA desk pen from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden as a consolation prize, and we sure hope that we will uh, hear from you with a postcard so we can put it in the big box here real soon. All right, second string. It's a close match. Brian Fuller will get us started here in the uh, middle, middle game as he'll start it on lane 32. Well, we watched Brian, you might mention that our scorekeeper, Dottie Lorick, was on the winning international team that competed against uh, Massachusetts and the two provinces in Canada, as well as Maine. And we have to congratulate them. They were representing the state of New Hampshire. That's Dottie Lorick, our scorekeeper, Carol Moran, Lois Queen, Penny Brady, and Vi Byron. Congratulations, girls. Absolutely. And let's also not neglect to mention uh, Janet Pock. Yes, okay, on, yes. In here, fact, now, uh, we tape sometimes uh, far in advance, so you, you lose track of what's happened. But Janet Pocket won two pro tours in a row. And at this particular time, um, is leading for Bowler of the Year. Her third tournament was, uh, she came in seventh, so she's just on fire right now. Strike for Brian Fuller in the second frame, and now Bill Logan. Right back with a matching strike. In fact, as you watch this show, um, if it's on the Sunday and not the Saturday replay, you might want to travel down to Boutwell's Bowling Center in Concord because the Pro Tour is going on as we speak. But wait until the end of the show. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. But you want to see how this turns out first. Almost a double strike for Bill Logan. Ooh, almost <laughs> went too far to the right. <laughs> he had a lot of room to play with there, and he almost went too far. <laughs> he just grabbed his heart like, ooh. <laughs> Mercy. Brian Fuller now working on a strike. 5-8. Oh, I gotta go right down at it, big guy. And we'll have to have that pin checked as it rolls forward. It probably will not be a factor in the shot anyway, but although that other piece of wood may very well be a factor. Exactly. That pin on the right, Dottie Lauer getting rid of it ahead of the Deadwood line, but you see that other piece is uh, right directly in front of the five pin and could really be a problem. This crowd, they make more noise for Dottie going down and picking that pin out than they do for these two bowlers who are bowling exceptionally well. Oh, tough shot there, Brian. Tough shot. Get that stick. That was a real tough one. No way to grind. I'm trying to bounce him right back again. 38 through three for Brian. Oh. 
Ooh, another big hit. one. This time it's the seven and nine. He wants that wood to stick around. Give me some kind of shot, he says. Boy, two eight drops and really nothing to shoot at, although this one may be a little easier than the last one. Maybe he's going to use the wood out in front. Hopefully the ball will carry him off at take one, and the wood will take the other pin. Or maybe or he won't not. take either one of them. <laughs> Forty-seven through four for Brian. Remember, he was trailing by three coming into this middle string, and Bill Logan is going to add to that lead right here as he has a fill coming up on a spare in the second. Oh, a nice looking ball. Ooh, around the five, around the eight, in between. Carries the five pin, he should carry the spare. No problems there. The lead right now is 13 plus this fill ball coming up. Ooh, wow. wow. We've seen some splits, Four. haven't we? And, and, and the ball that they, well, he's gonna get a break there. That's turned nicely for him. Plays the wood in front of the four, should carry the 10. Nice shot, four in a row. And we will break right here, and Bill Logan has really turned things around here as he is going back to last string, picked up six marks in the last eight boxes, including four in a row here to start the middle string. Things heating up in the series championship from Nault Scored here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We'll be back in a minute. Box number five, middle string. Brian Fuller, the southpaw. Oh, and he punches the one, eight, nine. He almost had just the one, nine. The eight just nudged, just fell over last minute. Oh, nice try. Actually cut the two in between the three and the five. Not a bad out there. Brian finds himself in the opposite end of the scoring here this week as uh, Bill Logan is starting to put things together and has built up a lead. Well, if you followed uh, Brian Fuller the last few weeks, needless to say, he's never been behind at this juncture of the game because he's opened up with some big games. Two weeks ago, 187, and last week, 153, I believe. Now, Bill Logan has four in a row, but just a four fill on the spare. lead right now is 26 for Bill. No bowler, and I'm sure Bill is uh, like everyone else. You don't want to make any mistakes, and if you get a mark, making a mistake is missing the head pin on the mark. You may punch through the middle and get a spread eagle on, this, on the spear, but there's not much you can do about that. But it's missing that object pin, especially on a mark. You don't want to do that, especially with the likes of Brian Fuller. Bill skipped that one a little bit. Yep, and the ball is actually sailing off to the right. And what happened is it hit the pins and went immediately to the right sidewall and didn't help him at all. Didn't cut through the pins. And that's the reason he has the two, four, five, eight, nine up. So Brian Fuller will pick up some ground here in this sixth box as he will be working on a spare when he comes up. And it's a nine box for Bill Logan. Well, Chance for Brian to climb back in a little bit. 66 and a ball. He's down by three after one game. He's down another 23 here, minus the ball. Mm. Again, missing the object pin. Takes five on the spare. But worst of all, nothing to shoot at. And let's see, no. Right now, Brian Fuller trails by 21.
Crossing over with a thin hit. And with the wood, this could happen. It's a 4-7 with a 10 in the right-hand corner. And it looks like right where the two pieces of wood meet, he drives the ball there. Should have a shot at carrying it. That's what he does. Nice shot. A lot of wood down there for that one. And Brian was able to carry it for the spare, his third to go along with two strikes in the match. Meanwhile, Bill Logan has five spares with two strikes. Quietly and slowly, he's creeping back into the match. Mm. Wow. Through the hole, but very close to make the sh making the shot. Elected to go inside of the head pin, have the ball go down and car carry the four and seven. Like that. Tries it again. Yep. Boy, that's a daring play there on the third ball. You don't want to have a bad box. And he's hit a little drought here in the last four boxes. Cleed is down to 20. But of course, he's opposite of spare. Ooh, nice try. Mm. Okay, here's another chance for Brian Fuller. Same situation. He comes up to fill a spare now in the eighth. And 20 pins is the lead. And again, Brian missed the head pin. He's just not getting a good lift on the ball, having that ball break back in from right to uh, left to right for him. And sliding more than anything else, leaves it to the left. On, well, right now, Brian trails by 15. So he's cut about half of what was a 27-pin lead down. But he still has some work to do, particularly on this shot. Try to cut the three into the 4-7. Into the Brian with a 116, and it will be 224 for two. Tough 116, too. Earned every one of those pins. <laughs> oh, chance for Bill Logan. Bill the lead. Oh. oh. Two, four, five, seven on the left with the 10 in the right hand corner. Going to try to split the two and the four. No. Well, doesn't get a 10. He's going to lose a few more in count. Going for the 10, and almost got it. Oh, this is a critical box for Bill right here because he could really add to his lead right here. Whatever he gets in this box just adds to the lead. Good looking ball going in, but you see the result. Six, seven, gonna snap the wood in front of the set, uh, six pin. Hopefully he'll hit the right side wall and then come across for the uh, seven pin. No. Well. This is going to go to the third string, very, very close. It's a 127 for Bill Logan, and the totals will go up on the board. Dottie Lark does the addition, and it will show 238 for Bill Logan and 224 for Brian Fuller. Just 14 pins the difference with one string to go for the Nolts Ford Championship. We'll be back on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Stay with us. Here's Bill Logan, leading by 14 pins with one string to go. Winner gets a $1,000 check, runner up $500. So 14 pins separates the bowls for 
difference of $500. No, missing the head pin. Again. Uh, I really don't know who gave the momentum, momentum to, momentum to, right now either Bill or Brian both seem to be uh, struggling a wee bit. Well, that second string, Bill started off like a house of fire with a strike and three spares, and then went markless the rest of the way, winding up with a 127. Now, it's a makeable shot here. One, three, six, and ten. All you got to do is split the one and the three. And with the wood, it you know, should carry the ten pin as well. Let's see what happens. Well, door's open for Brian. Pair of tens. Bill Logan. Would turn nice for him. Well, maybe, maybe not. Careful of the five. Uh, drove it right straight back. Big fill here will about even it up. Half a dozen. Or is it six? Oh, all right, get a stack. It's going to drop one back. To, well, I see that. Nice. Wow. He's going to drop one to count here, opposite the ten. The other one's got his own. Oh, wait. Brian has only had four spares in the match down, and his fills have been two, five, five, and six. That's really hurt. That's the bad news. Good news, he's within a mark now. 14 pin deficit coming in. He's got five of them back. Well, it's the first legitimate spare lead Bill's had in a while. Two, four. They're all getting big now. No. Leaves it to the right, goes around the four pin. Take it back. Uh, Brian Fuller has five spares. One of them he did not fill because it was the fill ball on a strike. in the 10th frame of the first game. Four horsemen plus that nine in the back. Ooh. Not coming easy for Bill right now. Bill's gone 10 boxes now without a mark. The chance for Brian Fuller, pair of nines this time. Yeah, uh, good looking ball, but six seven to show for it. Well, he's really going to have to snap that wood around. Yeah, it's going to go at the six pin. The ball almost went over there. Oh, can gain another in count. He's opposite nine. Can gain this one for, no, well, gonna match it. Still nine pins. Brian. <laughs> we'll take a break right here, and I have a feeling we'll get another look at that strike as we go out. It's going to be very, very close. We have six boxes remaining, just a few pins separating the two bowlers. Don't go away. It'll all be decided next. And here's another look at the strike. Six boxes to go. And... When Brian Fuller fills that strike, he comes up, it's going to be just about even. Four horsemen to the right, one, three, six, and ten. 
There aren't any shots easy enough right now. $1,000 on the line. Outside, oh, yeah. outside. Domino effect to get, get the one, three, six, and 10. Beautifully done. Big mark for Bill. Breaks a drought of 10 boxes without a mark. Again, he went in a little heavy on the head pin. Couldn't break up that four pin. So he leaves himself the three, six, 10 with the four. He's gonna have to split the three and the six. Ooh, very close. Every pin is big now. Load it right up, Brian. Load it right up. 64 through 6 for Bill Logan. And now we'll see exactly what the lead will be here. Anything over an 8 on the strike, and Brian will take the lead. But, of course, he's opposite a mark here. Cluster five in her left-hand corner, two, four, seven, five in the eight. Piece of wood in behind the two and the four. Oh, spare on strike. Brian takes the lead. Come on, nice one, one Matches the spare. Come on, it's something. Mm, boy, it looked better than that. Snap a right all along. Five, nine, and 10. Puts him in the lead by three, I believe. Make it! Oh, what a shot! Oh, wow! Oh, baby! Oh. Three Cuts. marks in a row for Brian Fuller. This is the best of the three. Cut the five pin over off the wall into the ten and then the nine for a real clutch spare. Bill Logan. Oh, he went outside again, hoping to catch the pin in the back, and that's all he got. We well, gotta put a mark up there, make Brian, give Brian something to think about. Brian's got the lead, plus he's got a mark up. He can increase his lead. Light hit on the head. Ooh, boy. Ooh, he had the three six in the, with a seven, but now he's got the seven. And now it's just a question of the wood. And, ooh. Wow. Well, it's double wood, but it's not severe double wood. He's got room. Oh, what a oh. shot that was. Still alive. Oh, wow. You really couldn't see from the angle there exactly how tough that double wood was. It was sticking out just slightly of the from the channel, and Bill got around it for the spare. Super shot. Big nine fill. It puts the lead up to a dozen. Of course, he's opposite an open frame. Four marks in a row for Brian Fuller. Come on, same ball, give you ten. Oh, off target that time. Just five. And now he's opposite a mark. Well, the last two for Bill Logan. This is on a mark, and it's just five. Yeah, he's going to have to have another one. Yeah, he's really going to have to two marks. He's been down by 11. Not there. That's what he wanted to do. Well, he's got to put a mark up and hope that uh, Brian has a bad frame or a double strike. Oh, 
Got a shot, two, four, seven, and the five. He's got a chance. Nice, nice shot. shot. Very nice, nice shot. shot. Now, if he throws a large fill here, Dan, as we get a look at the replay, if he gets a big fill on this, he'll at least force Brian to pin highly or get a mark to win it. Just depends on what the fill is. Looks pretty good. And it is good, a nine. So it's a 117 and a total of 355 for Bill Logan. 131 is a tie. 132 is a win. So Brian needs 19 pins in two boxes to win. <laughs> Doesn't need the mark, but he can't afford a bad box. Whoops. Oh, boy. All right, give it a pop. We've seen it happen before. When it came down to just pinning and bowlers have not been able to do it. So let's see. Uh, he's got to grab two of these, otherwise he's going to need a mark. Uh-oh. All right, come on, Eight. one on the bottom, close the door right here, big guy. If Brian should throw a 10 here, we'll have a tie. He needs a mark now to win. Otherwise, we go two box overtime with a 10 box. Well, let's get a shot. He's barely, Bill Logan is shaking his head. He says, well, here it is right here. Oh, no defense, all offense. He's got it. Hey, he got it is right. If he keeps the ball on the lane, he will win himself a thousand dollars. Thousand dollar ball. Just needs to hit something here. Being very careful, and it's an eight drop, and there's your champion. Brian Fuller made it a little tougher than it had to be there in the final two, but he takes the ladder championship and $1,000. The final score, 363 for Brian Fuller, 355 for Bill Logan. What a finish. We'll be back to talk to both bowlers and try and give away some more money in the bonus ball contest right after these words. Back at Park Place Lanes, Doug Brown, Dan Murphy will be here again in a second. Uh, Tony Maceos, the new vehicle operations manager for Nalts Ford in Manchester and Hooksett, has joined me. He is going to help me present the big $1,000 check to Brian Fuller in just a moment. But first of all, let's have a big hand for our runner-up, Bill Logan, who's made his first appearance on the program today from Woburn, Massachusetts. And, uh, Bill, it, <laughs> it went right down to the end. I don't know how, how uh, <laughs> it's got a pretty helpless feeling, I know, when you're just sitting there waiting for it to all happen. But uh, still a great performance, uh, especially for first time here and uh, you came very very close i'm just happy to bowl as well as i did i missed a few shots a little, little tension up there trying too hard for the big money you know <laughs> a little bit of tension yeah i can imagine well we do have the uh, the 500 dollars check for you and also the uh, the runner-up plaque from the nnr trophy company and uh, we hope to see you back again real real soon nice going thank you very much all right bill logan congratulations and uh, now that means it's time for us to uh, head it over to lane 31 where brian fuller will face the real pressure now Brian's last two uh, bonus ball attempts the last two weeks have been four and two. So let's see if he can uh, get somebody a match here. Oh, this time a nine. So come on over, Brian. We'll chat with you in just a second. And Tony, why don't you do the honors and reach in and see if we can get a match here. We're looking for a nine and not a match. Wouldn't you know it's a low number this time. A five for Jay O'Donnell in Burlington, Mass. And uh, not a match for Jay, so that means the jackpot will continue to go up. We'll have $90 next week. And, uh, boy, piece of cake, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I assume you knew when you went up there that, that you didn't need a mark, provided that you had the, the nine first. Right, but I got the eight box, and I needed a mark to win. Boy, that was, uh, that's really something, coming down to one shot like that. I noticed you, you seemed to be extra careful on that last shot to make sure you didn't uh, fall or, or foul or lob or anything. <laughs> just wanted one pin. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got plenty more than you needed, and uh, that's going to mean $1,000. And here to present the check to you is uh, the new vehicle operations manager for Nalts Ford, uh, Tony Maceos. Tony? Congratulations, Brian. Brian, I was at work when you bowled at 187, so they called me up and they said, you better bring this car down here right away. And I heard you just missed it by a spare. And uh, <laughs> your fans would like us to give you the car, but uh, we'll have to wait till someone hits a 200 to keep it fair, okay? And uh, you certainly earned this today. And congratulations, you, Super Bowling. 
thousand dollars and uh, of course the the champions version of the plaque from NNR trophy and uh, I'm sure you must be very happy three uh, three for three first time you've been on with us and you ran three shows together and uh, although the score wasn't as high you got the the pins when you needed them yeah I like the first two shows better a little easier <laughs> when you get up there not needing them oh <laughs> uh, yeah that's true uh, but again you showed uh, resilience there coming from behind congratulations really a great effort and uh, also on the 187 two weeks ago one of the only the second the second highest show we've ever had uh, second highest stream we've had here on the program congratulations a great job terrific job for Brian Fuller the championship here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes and Tony as you mentioned uh, had those keys uh, jangling there for a while for Brian but uh, he did get the big money and uh, great performance super bowling job and uh, I'm sure everyone that watched that 187 string was rooting for that spear and we were too you know <laughs> we certainly like to give a car away for a 200 string well we really appreciate uh, Nolts Ford's support uh, and your efforts here on these five uh, shows here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes and we hope to see you again real soon. Thanks Tony. Super, we'll be back. All right, thank you very much Tony Maceos and we'll see if we can slide Dan Murphy in here right now and uh, just have a few closing comments as we wrap it up here on Stars and Strikes. Uh, boy, it, it was an adventure there for Brian, uh, those last two boxes, but he got the job done. He certainly did, thousand dollars and a few weeks before that he almost drove away with a new Ford Escort and I'd like to thank Tony too and Nolts for uh, providing us with a uh, bonus prize that really created a lot of excitement. And thank you too. Thank you, too, Doug. All right. <laughs> I guess that does it. You'll see the other people we have to thank in the final credits here as we go away on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Thanks for joining us. Next week, of course, we start a brand-new ladder championship series with a whole bunch of new bowlers. Added prize money for that one, too. We'll tell you more about that next week. But for right now, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 sports crew, so long, everybody, from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham.